Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use the AI Generative Pattern Fill on Adobe Illustrator. It's great. So let's jump right in. Here are just a few samples that I've already generated. Let's make a new doc. And this one's going to be uh, 1000 by 1000 with four artboards just for samples. And I'm going to cut back and forth between this one and the previous one that I made. So you're going to need window swatches to be open and layers to be open. Then let's go over to Object, Pattern, Generate Patterns Beta, and that opens this window right here. I'll move these side by side to show you what we're doing, and then we'll use the layers a little bit later. To start with, um, I'm going to create a simple flower with A simple generation right here and uh, I'm gonna just go with a flat design so you can choose different styles there aren't that many different ones and then I'm gonna go with a simple four color setup that is a warm tone so it should keep everything analogous these look pretty promising to start with and I'll grab a square rectangle tool and pull that out for the full size of the artboard and select on each one of these. They look great so far and now they're registered down here in my swatches panel. You can make changes to those pretty simply. So let's take this one, it's selected here. Go up to object, transform, and then we'll do a scale change to it. Make sure that transform objects is not checked on. And let's uh, change the scale down maybe to 45%. Makes it real tight. And now it's more like a textural pattern. That looks great. And if you like that one, but you also want to go back to the original, hit this little plus sign down here and it created a new pattern. And with the rectangle selected, you can now click on that first one. You click it once and then click it again and you'll see the original pattern come back and say you wanted to switch back and forth you'll do that don't double click them although we will use this tool this is the edit pattern tool right here and all it does is shows you the actual design unit let me move this stuff out of the way and you can see actually what repeats here this is a great pattern. Sometimes you're gonna get them just like this where there's some directional movement. Everything isn't oriented perfectly one way or the other, but it is a directional pattern. In other words, if you turned it upside down, um, it would look upside down. So a way to get around that, and let's just cancel out of this change here, is to give the pattern fill some specific pattern terms. We're gonna go non-directional let's see what we get let's pull out a new rectangle to test this out and just to be safe I'm gonna put each pattern into the rectangle and again those will all show up down here in my swatches so these are still kind of directional but this one not so much and that brings me to another edit that we can do which is to click on the swatch go up transform and let's do rotate make sure transform objects is not on and now when i rotate that yeah that looks a little more dynamic and interesting and of course it can go any direction so it's not always going to get it right let's try a few other terms flower with sprigs half half drop pull out another rectangle let's give them a look not bad this is an actual half drop pattern and you can tell because if we zoom in these are offset, just like uh, a half drop would be. So let's do another one. Let's 
Let's give it a look on a new rectangle. Oh, pretty good. Okay, I really like this one. Okay, these look pretty good, and I'm going to go in and make some edits in the other document that I have here, and I'll show you how to customize these a little bit further. But I'm also going to put a, a set of terms that you can use for prompts in generating your patterns. The link will be down in the description. Let's go back over to this one here. So say you've generated some patterns, and let's look at this one. It's okay. It has some variety, and it's not terrible but you know it's not the most interesting thing in the world we can actually make some edits to it real quick so let's find that pattern jump in over here and double click on the swatch it opens the pattern editor and now with the direct selection tool I can make some changes I'm gonna make this circle a little bit darker so I'll just double click over here on the swatches and drop its saturation and value a little bit Nothing crazy. Let's do a few more. Let's make this one a little bit brighter, lighter in saturation. Let's make maybe this one here. So we're not going in a total perfect row. We're going to make this one a little bit lighter. And whatever I've done to one side, you can see that the other half of this is located over here. I'll select it. And with the eyedropper, just select that corresponding color so that motif isn't cut in half. Now let's hit done and see, okay, that's a much more interesting pattern. All it did was create a little variety. That's a quick way to make an edit. Say you want to change the background color on that. Let's come over to this one here. I believe that's this swatch. I'm going to double click into it and you'll now see inside the layers this is all the anatomy of that pattern and it conveniently packs it up when you're not in the pattern editor i'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom i'm going to select the background color the background color is all always going to be down there at the bottom let me come over here into the swatches and i'm going to move up like into this like weird kind of greenish color just a little bit and I can see already that's activated that pattern. So I've made it a little bit more interesting and give it a little bit more of a dynamic color range. Now you can see that's a lot more improved and just with a slight shift in background color. Last thing I want to show you by going into that uh, is you can click on a pattern like this, double click into it. And this one I generated using lots of different search terms and I upped all of the different settings inside of here. I cranked it up to like 24 colors, stuff like that. Um, you can select on a motif. Say you're like, oh, I love this motif. It looks awesome, but you know, maybe you don't want all the other stuff in there. You can go in with the selection tool, just a regular black arrow, hit copy, and I'm gonna cancel out of that one. I'll come off to the side and you can see I already did one here. I'm gonna paste it and let's take these two, rotate them. And with all of them selected now, I can do it the old school way go to Object, Pattern, Make, and it will bring me back into that pattern editor. If I hit OK, then I can start to see what happens here. I can set it into a brick by row, brick by column, something like that. And then I can also select over all of these, go up or down to change and align the spaces. Of course, this is a little more labor than using the uh, new generative fill, but this does create a swatch. It will appear up here. So when you have a pattern selected then you click on this pattern fill and then we've just made our own custom pattern based on really quickly some of the stuff made in the generative tool so these are some of the great results that you're going to get by playing around with and using some of the terminology i put in the link in the description good luck generating your patterns in adobe illustrator